Hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. Uh, today I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I get asked all the time, you know, how do I do what I do? When people hire me, um, what does it look like? How do I come up with what I come up with? What's it like on set? You know, just a, a lot of questions about what it is I actually do for a living. So I actually had a crew with me for a shoot last month and did a little behind the scenes filming of our trip in Atlanta shooting at Road Atlanta with S3 Magazine. Uh, I know a lot of you have been asking what I've been doing with S3 Magazine all year long. So I made this little video to kind of show you not only what I do for S3, but kind of what I do day in and day out for clients all over the country. We spent three days in Atlanta filming the Grid Life South event. Grid Life is kind of a nationwide series of races. We did one up in Michigan and now S3 is doing this one here in Atlanta. Yeah. The first day is kind of all about scouting and prepping and finding the right location. As much as it is about telling the story, the first day you're just trying to figure out what the story, the overall arc is going to be with an event like this and just finding the best shots, knowing that you're going to be capturing people racing. You want to know what parts of the track are going to look best and where they're gonna be on the track so you can cut it all together and show some variety of shots. But then there is the story and the story is important. With a shoot like this, the story kind of evolves. Each race is different. S3 is doing a lot of different things to their car. They're also trying to become professional drivers. So it's a lot about their growth, the car's growth, how the car handles its mistakes, its pitfalls of each track and each race. So you're just kind of waiting for that to happen or something to happen that you can latch onto and, and follow through to a finish. For this shoot, since I had a crew with me, we actually rented an Airbnb and that was nice to kind of get back and have a nice place for us all to decompress and go over everything together. Uh, it's very important to go over your footage each day, especially in a shoot like this. So you can kind of see where your story went that day and what to add to it the next day. It's also great to have a meeting the next morning to go over, hey, we got this yesterday and this happened yesterday, so let's make sure we go after this kind of storyline and follow the shots to tell that story today. All right, so I made some notes. Um, I looked at yesterday's footage. It's really good. Um, so no, 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 it's really good. The story, it seems like it's still like, the, the story at the last one was overheating. Um, and it seems like that's still, kind of their problem they're saying they're having to like back off back off yeah. for a lap or so um so i guess let's try to plug that as much as possible and then jason owens type r actually broke so we need to go talk to him and see why it broke and what they're doing to fix it because it might be like the ghost of christmas future for s3 so that might be good mm. i definitely want to get an interview with the marvel guy yeah because I was looking at the GoPro footage and we definitely have him all over that. Oh, really? Have both of them passing each other oh, for a couple cool. of laps. And since I'm playing both cinematographer, editor, and director on this, it's up to me to show them exactly what we need to be doing and to collaborate with them and say, hey, what do you think is best? And what have you gotten so far? Or what do you think we need to capitalize on? Shot wise, you guys are doing great. Just always be thinking where the audience or the spectator can't be. Okay. So like, if, if you're like just getting coverage from like, just think like, would the average person be able to see this? Uh, okay. Let me try to figure out something that they wouldn't be able to see and where I can be different. We'll probably run with, like we did yesterday, run with the S3 story and then we'll have two days of story and then tomorrow we can just spend on yeah, extra stuff. Shot. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That was a bad idea. Yeah. All right. Cool. It's a good film. Yes. Cool. Sometimes I just like to observe a conversation that two people are having without the cameras on. It helps them to not feel like they have to be on uh, and camera ready and actually have an honest and open conversation. And you can actually sit there like a fly on the wall and listen to the conversation and kind of let a natural dialogue develop into something good that you might have not gotten if they felt pressured to say something on camera. And then once you feel that story, you can go back later and say, hey, can, do you mind recapping what you guys were talking about? 
and, and go over that with me again. And I know it's not fresh, but you might not have been able to get that if you just showed up with a camera. So with the series, I'm always trying to find the best angle, the right angle, different angles for the car. Each car is different. You might try to get the same angle and put it in the, the camera in the same place, but it's gonna look completely different on the car. Luckily, we had the same car through the whole thing, so by the end of the series, I knew exactly where to put the cameras, but having the most angles and really dynamic angles helps build the action when they're racing and tells the best story. Along with that, you want to make sure you give yourself enough time to set up each angle. You don't want to slow them down and you don't want them to slow you down. So prepping and having enough time and knowing exactly what you want to do with your camera on the car is key. Shooting the series and really any shoot, it's important to be fast and efficient. Batteries die all the time. You always want to keep a couple of batteries in your pocket for each different camera you're using and be able to switch them out quickly. One. I'm kind of working like a pit crew and getting these cameras recording and battery switched out before they go back out because they're hot lapping. One driver will come in, another driver will go out and there'll be like no time in between and I've just got to get all the GoPros ready as fast as I can. Also, when people are just having a natural conversation and your battery dies, you want to be able to just pop a new battery in real quick so you're missing very little of that natural dialogue and that natural storytelling. I know I just contradicted this when I said sometimes I just like to watch the conversation, but that's mainly for people who haven't been on camera yet and they're going to talk to them like, I don't want to just show up and be like, hey, come have this natural conversation with a guy that's experienced and used to having a camera in his face and you're not. It was really frustrating and in my opinion, kind of borderline dangerous. Um, those guys need to go faster, man. They gotta go faster. With this shoot with S3, I've found that it's best to interview the driver after each session. Uh, it really lets you know what, was, what they're going through out there on the track. It's a great way to develop and build a story, and a natural story from something that's actually happening to them. It also, by interviewing them right away, you're getting a very fresh take on what just happened and you're not having to stage or recap anything. Um, but that was a lot of fun. I love the fact that they spaced us out and really kind of let us have it. The beginning, there was still a little bit of a cluster. We had to get some of the guys out of the way, but after that, man, we had an open track. For this series, Mike and Wooly, the owners of S3 Magazine, weren't professional race car drivers. They were pretty much novices, but the smart thing they did was they uh, brought along professionals with them to help show them. Now, this not only helped them, but it helped me in creating a natural storyline of you know, watching these guys become better racers and getting hints and tips and coaching from all these other guys. And it's a, sort of a recreation of a French production racing car from that era. We wanted to build an era specific car, so something coming in out of the 70s. This is Adding in the drivers gave the series more depth and a broader look at the story. That's why it's important to decompress, charge your batteries at the end of the day, and look at all your footage so you can see, hey, there's a lot of play between these two cars. Let's go talk to that driver and see what he was thinking the same time as our our driver was passing him and what they were thinking and build a story off of that. Today I want to focus on the Type R and make Mud Misty happy because they always want shots of the car. Yeah. And yes. then I want to like, um, obviously. I want to get like Wooly and Mike talking about it. I think when we get there, we'll have them jump in the car. I'll set up GoPros mm -hmm. and then we need to, when we first get there, we need to go get the gimbal. Put my camera on the gimbal, <coughs> put me in the back of the car, mm -hmm. leading them, and they'll just drive through the parking lot that they're parked in. Okay. And I'm gonna get them to talk about you know, grid life, the car, how it's handled with the new parts on it, everything like that. Okay. The 3X's gimbal, as much as I hate it and as much as it kills my back, is a great way to showcase something. In this series, it was showcasing the car. Your main goal is to tell the best story, but you also want to keep your sponsors and your clients happy. They want to see that in the best light. Part of your job, if not most of your job, is making your client happy. I've learned that keeping people laughing, telling jokes, being silly is a great way to break the ice with someone that's about to be on camera. And even the people that have to be on camera all the time, you just want to keep them having fun. You don't want them to see being on camera as this nightmare 
grueling process. You want it to be a fun process. So I like to joke around as much as possible and keep the mood light so that I get a natural response and I get them having fun. All right, we are done. We're literally here till the bitter end. All right guys, I know this video is a little different. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you did like it and you want more videos like this, leave a comment below. As always, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and hit that bell so you'll be notified the next time I drop a video. Thanks.